uh, yeah, somebody uh, please mute yourself. Yes. Yes, ma'am, please mute yourself. And I'm going to share my screen now. Ma'am, can you permit me to share the screen? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Yeah, please let me know when the screen is uh, visible. Is my screen visible now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I when I play, please tell me. Is it audible? No, ma'am. Not audible. Today I don't know what has happened. There's so much of uh, technological challenge we are facing. In spite of the fact that the two of us have already tested everything in the morning uh, before starting the session, and yet there are so many challenges that we are encountering. If it doesn't work now, then we'll drop it. Is it audible now? Ma'am, no, ma'am. Okay. Then, ma'am, what we can. I think it's an unmute, ma'am. I think it is a new. Uh, the uh, video? Uh, let, me yes, try, let me try again, but uh, I don't think so. But let me try again. Volume is full. I think you have to unmute, ma'am. Oh, I mean, the device uh, in which you are playing the video. I am playing it on my laptop. It is unmuted. But it's not audible. Yes, ma'am. it is not audible. Some network issue this time. Anyways, uh, what what we can do is please share it in the chat if possible. Let me see if I can share in the chat. Uh, and then, uh, can we share in the group somewhere? Do we have a group where all the participants are there? Would you like to share it in the chat there? Mama, if it is a link, then we can post it in the chat box, ma'am. If there is a link for that video, then we can post oh, it in the chat box, okay. ma'am. Uh, well, there is no link there. Uh, anyways, uh, I think what I will do is, uh, you can share the screen once again, please, ma'am. You can share the PPT. Uh, what I can do is for the audience quickly uh, tell them what exactly happened in the video. And uh, in the video, we find that this uh, gentleman is uh, addressing students uh, around 11, 12 class two. He's addressing, and he's talking about uh, our interactions with others and how we react and respond to what others do. So he says, I was standing uh, once I was traveling somewhere and I was walking down the road and I really felt tired and I was feeling a little faint. So under a tree, I stood and uh, I was trying to relax a little bit. That some, someone from uh, in a house unknown to me, a stranger looked at me and he could see that I'm not feeling well. So he indicated to me, uh, he gestured to me that would you like to drink some water? So I told him, yes, I would like to drink some water. 
and i felt in my heart what a good man he looked at me he is complete stranger he doesn't know about me and yet he is feeling uh, compassionate towards me and he is going to bring me sir and i am standing there and standing there he didn't come he didn't come and i am thinking he has made me wait for such a long what kind of a person he is first he is committed to me that he is going to bring water and now i am standing here for such a long time he has not brought the water what kind of a person it is then after a few seconds i see him coming down and he brings uh this um, glass with him and he has a jug with him and he brings and he says uh, sorry it took me uh, uh, some time to come across uh, to you and uh, uh, somebody has messaged there is a background noise uh, that is disturbing okay just give me a moment let me just correct it okay now you will not experience this background noise Uh, hello, am I audible? It's not yeah, because audible, of the background noise. There was some uh, traffic noise in the background, so I changed my position so that the session would not be disturbing. Now I was giving you the example of this gentleman. So uh, this person, he comes down and he brings uh, a jug and a glass with him, and he says, "Look, uh, I was first bringing water for you, but then I thought it is so hot. Let me bring some shikanji for you." And it took me some time to prepare that shikanji. That is why I got late. And then now the teacher says, "Look, the moment he said that he has brought me shikanji, I thought, what a good man, you know. He has not only brought water for me, he has gone out of his way and prepared shikanji for me and sweetened water for me, and he is bringing it for me, a lemonade." and then he says that uh, the moment i took a sip i realized it was uh, uh, you know unpalatable it was not tasting very good and i again thought that he's made chikaji and he's made it so bad it, it would have been better if he would have given me a glass of water instead of giving me chikaji so then he suddenly says sir wait please wait i have got sugar separately because many times people have sugar problem i was not sure whether you would like to have sugar in your chikaji or not so i put uh, sugar uh, let me put sugar for you uh, let me put sugar for you so he put the sugar for the person and then he says now i start feeling oh what a good man he is so caring he is so thoughtful uh, he is uh, thinking about every aspect for me and look i am thinking like that. one moment i'm thinking is bad one moment i'm thinking is good and so fast we are forming judgments about that. so give other person some space give other person some time to present themselves clearly in front of you try to understand them try to give them some sort of semblance of understanding before you form an opinion about them this is the message this gentleman was transferring to these young girls and what a beautiful message nowadays what is lacking most in the younger generation is tolerance and is patience and how beautifully he was able to explain he may be teaching them chemistry he may be teaching them mathematics or he may be their headmaster i really don't know whatever his profile in the institution but this particular message so nicely he was able to bring a bring across to these young girls at just the right appropriate age for them to carry forever and 
it is such an impactful message it impacted me at my age with my experience i give it a thought yes he makes sense we form judgment so fast we make opinions about others so fast we go with preconceived notions into meetings into uh, uh, you know relationships with the students or relationship with others around us in whether it is professional life or personal life uh, why don't we give it some space why don't we give it some moments of understanding compassion tolerance and some level of patience before we form opinions about that things so this is what i wanted to say ma'am we can move to the next slide now please i hope you are with me now the next part that i wanted to talk about was uh, the delivery uh, i'm so sorry i can see people are asking for the link for the feedback we have already exceeded our time there have been so many uh, technical issues and problems that we have faced in the session please uh, bear with me now i will go with this delivery part of it quickly now it is more about the learning engagement of the students so i have presented myself nicely now comes how i interact with the students and that interaction will bring the belongingness give it an organized structure now there are three parts of it first part of it is the delivery second part of it is the assessment and the third part of and the most important part of it is the interaction where people are interacting with each other i would have loved to hear some of your experiences um, but uh, i guess due to paucity of time we are not being able to do so lot of disturbance of people joining so so the most important part is the interaction part if your class or session is interactive where people are participative are engaged with you you know you have won them over now delivery is bringing lot of aspects especially in today's time when our students mind is diverted or disturbed by four screen the four screen that they are disturbed by is the laptop the computer the mobile and the cinema or the tv the four screens divide their attention distract their attention and bring so much information in fact information overload is taking place in that we have to create a space uh, for their attention for our class for our session and they are not only able to understand what we are teaching they are also able to remember and take it forward in future with them so with that kind of impact if we have to create then there are certain elements that we can build into our teaching methodology which can bring that interaction forward and create that belongingness and give the feeling of a very structured organized faculty who knows their business ma'am we can move to the next slide yeah so here now how to get an engaging session how to get that interaction how to make my delivery now my contention here always is with the faculty colleagues that whenever you are teaching a subject don't look at it in totality the first step should be to break it down into different pieces pieces breaking breaking it down into your course outline the course outline should be broken down into number of sessions that you have to take let's say that if you are teaching a subject uh, uh, corporate governance and the number of uh, sessions that are available to you are 20 session of 1 and 1/2 hour each then what i suggest to you is break your whole syllabus down into those 20 session in terms of a course outline and in terms of a lesson plan and once you have broken down into a lesson plan each lecture or each session should be taken up in isolation as an individual entity at the end of each of my classes or session the student should feel yes there was some value at there is something i took from the session to back home and he looks forward to us coming for your next session this particular first session has been so that he is actually interested in going in for the next session uh there is uh, one faculty colleague who's raised their hand would you like to ask a question uh, no ma'am you can okay. continue ma'am that may be by mistake okay. ma'am all right so uh, i was talking about that 
each session should be planned in such a manner that after the delivery of this particular session, the student should be excited and looking forward to the next. That what my faculty will bring, what my faculty will say, what kind of case study they will bring, what kind of exercise they will make me do. Even management games, you should not wait for a special period or a special, uh, special classroom session for management games. Bring those management games to your class. Make the students excited. Make them move around in the classroom. Or uh, even if it's a, uh, you know, it need not be a management student. It could be any discipline. Bring those games, those activities into your classroom. Make your students move around in the classroom, whether it is chemistry, whether it is physics, any kind of subject, even math. You can bring in so many different activities into your classroom to make your subject matter exciting. And what I say is once you've delivered the concept for 20 minutes, so you have a one and a half hour session, let's say. You've delivered a session or uh, some theory, concept, precepts you have explained for 20 minutes. Then give it 10 minutes time for a breakaway exercise. Not that breakaway exercise could be multiple choice questions. It could be a short quick quiz. It could be a Pictionary. It could be a Damshara game. It could be a crossword. It could be some kind of humorous anecdote or some video that you are showing, some audio you are showing. Just now I showed a video uh, due to technical errors. Uh, it was not audible to you. But the impact, the manner in which the whole uh, session is being conducted, there is a brief getaway. It gives time for the student to absorb the information that you've given and also for you to test out to what extent that they have understood what you have taught. And then once this 30, 30 minutes are over, so 20 minutes of concepts and precepts, 10 minutes of some sort of exercise, uh, case led, case study, worksheet, whatever you feel uh, compatible with the subject matter that you're teaching, take it. I will be sharing some examples as we keep moving forward. And hopefully now the technology will, uh, fingers crossed, support us. So I will share examples how it can be brought together and how the flavor of the class can be changed and how the interest of the students can be generated, even if you're taking a mundane topic or a very, very regular routine topic and still the zinc can be brought into your uh, classes using these activities. So 20 minutes of teaching, concepts, precepts, theory, whatever, and 10 minutes of this exercise. And let that exercise or activity be very different than what it was uh, done in the previous class. So students should always be wondering what we will do in the next class. That excitement should be there. That curiosity should be there in the students. And when you are able to build that curiosity for your sessions among the students, let me tell you, you will become the most popular student in the whole system that exists. Or maybe you will become one of the most popular faculty, if not the only popular faculty amongst the students, because they are excited. They don't want to leave uh, the sessions. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, uh, I would like to share a personal experience. I was working at four school of management then. And uh, normally, you know, uh, it was a five day working. So uh, till Friday, the sessions used to take place. Saturday, Sunday used to be off. And sometimes on a Thursday, uh, there would be uh, a holiday, let's say Ambedkar Jayanti or any uh, holiday for that matter. And tendency of the students would be that they would not come on Friday. So there in four school of management, timetable used to be set up uh, every day. So it used to be a varied timetable. It's not that in the beginning of the semester or trimester, the timetable is set up and it remains throughout. No, it used to be made every week. A new timetable used to be made for the student, depending on faculty available and engagements. So uh, I found that uh, the academic uh, pro uh, office used to always put my class on such Fridays, on such days where uh, the day was intervening between two holidays or something like this. And always, and I always used to ask for the first class because I always used to say, I want students press for my session. I'm taking economics and I can't afford for them to be tired uh, or for them to be not as alert in this class. So they used to put the first session. And uh, one day I went to this academic officer. I asked him that every time you put my class only and that too is the first class I understand because I have requested. But every time you put my class between two holidays, whenever I'm not taking a leave, he says, ma'am, whenever your class is scheduled, the whole class comes. All the students come. Otherwise, they run away, they take a break. Now, I am really telling and sharing with you. The, what was the reason? The reason was first, economics is an important subject for a student. And secondly, that I would always attempt to bring something new to my class that the student would look forward to what ma'am is going to do today.
what is going to be different what exercise something different she's going to do that will make us not only laugh it will stimulate our mind it will trigger our thought process and there will be something food for thought so this is the kind of effort if we are able to put into our session into our delivery then the results are going to be phenomenal and we are going to love the results the students will come back and love you so much that all the effort that you put into it because it's not easy to plan such a thing i understand that and as a faculty we have so many other engagements it's not just about teaching there are institutional building activities there are other administrative responsibility yet at the same time go a little extra mile go a little extra step and see the kind of result and affection love that you get from your students it will overwhelm you ma'am we can go to the next slide and uh, uh, we can see an example so let's say i have to teach a topic like negotiation and this topic is uh, not that very exciting topic negotiation i can do a case study yes i can do that and i definitely do a case study negotiation but i also show this video to the students and when i show this video to the students in my class their whole outlook and perspective in the beginning of the class changes they are more amenable to listening to me they are more amenable to understanding what i have to say and when somebody has given you your ear, their ear then probably half the battle is won as a teacher or a faculty so please uh, can we move to the next slide and play the video ma'am if possible and let's see if it is uh, audible now not this one the next one okay with the disclaimer
120 plus 180 plus 100 plus 90. So, who are 490? Simple maths. Our Rainaka charge is 450. Or Hamko Lodi Kelly, half mega 490. Total, half So, Sir, आप seriously बताइए हमने final rate बता दिया है 2500 per day आप interested हैं हम भी final rate बता रहा हूँ आप interested हैं thank you ma'am you see on a lighter way when this kind of humor is brought into the class the student is more attuned towards you uh, can we move to the next slide ma'am next slide Now, when I talk about exercises or worksheets, audios, videos, it need not be very elaborate. It can be very, very simple. It can be just uh, simple as the video initially that I described to you, and it can be as simple as the exercise. And in this particular exercise, I would request all the faculty colleagues who are participating to uh, write on the chat what they feel about. So this is an A-level exercise where there are four questions. And the answers to the four questions, I also request all the faculty colleagues attending the session to write in the chat what would be their answers to these questions. Very short, sweet questions. Ma'am, can you click uh, the link and uh, the document will open up? Yes. Uh, is it visible to my friends? Uh, if it is visible, can you write why in the chat? If it's visible, can you please write why in the chat? Faculty colleagues? Yes, it is visible. Thank you, Dr. Anna. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dev Kiji uh, for writing this. All right. So let's look at the first one. What would be your response to this question? Now, uh, typically, I give one minute time to my students to answer this. But uh, let's say what you have to say, and you have uh, more time. So let's see the responses that come forward. OK, Yasmin Ji has said uh, uh, SS. What about others? Please, there are three that you have to fill up. So you have to fill up three. What are the responses from others? Yes, please, let us see. If this was a question which was posed to you, where it says, continue the sequence in a logical way, what would be your response? Please come out and chat on the, please come out and type on the chat. I am waiting for the responses. And if this one is not, striking or is not uh, making any sense to you okay let's move for the next one and all those who are the maths wizards amongst us please help me solve this correct this formula with a single stroke okay um, yes i will be sharing the clues for all thank you yes Ninji, for being participative uh, i'm getting the uh, responses all right uh, for uh, question number two and for question number three also. And then I will request Vidya ma'am to show question number four. Let me see your responses. Yes, very nice. Let me see your responses for question number one, two, and three. What would be your response? Okay, very nice. Very nice. Very nice, Kaushal ji. And uh, ma'am, uh, what about your response to question number three? Mishra ji, what is your response to question number three? And ma'am, can you show question number four also? Yes. 
draw a rectangle with three lines. Draw a rectangle with three lines. Yes, what would you do if you have to draw a rectangle with three lines? All right. Uh, maybe it will be difficult for you to put it in the chat to draw a rectangle with three lines. So let me take it forward uh, from here. Now, if uh, man, can you show the first one? Now, the first one, uh, one of us has got it right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And uh, uh, yes, Ji, uh, may, may I get your logic of putting SS? What was your thought process of putting SS? Okay, so what Mishra ji has done, he has said that it is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Then again, T is there, so it is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday repeated. Well, it is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So what should follow is FSS. FSS should be, and yes, you put uh, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, probably you wanted to add Friday also. So you got it right. Now, what I'm trying to teach here is with this simple one-minute exercise, that sometimes when we are communicating, the intended message by sender was to receive Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But the interpretation done by the receiver is completely different. So what Mishra ji has interpreted in this here is uh, that you, uh, you can repeat the sequence with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which is also not wrong from his perspective. He is right. But at the same time, when I am preparing a question paper as a teacher, and when the student is receiving the question paper as a student, the understanding there is a difference. And this is the exercise I take up at the beginning of the class about communication skills or principles of communication. That whenever we are framing our messages, we have to think from the perspective of the receiver of receiving a message. Similarly, uh, shift. Uh, Seva Sankarji answered this question very correctly, where he said, convert with a single stroke, convert the first plus sign to four sign, and 545 plus 5 will become 550. While when I was doing this exercise, I thought if I put unequal to sign in between 5 plus 5 plus 5, unequal to 550, and I would be right. And I was thinking great about myself. But when I read the actual answer, I myself thought, realized that what Sif Sankarji has said is the correct answer or the correct response. So the expected response was this one, while I had another response. And in all fairness, that response can also not be said that it is a wrong response. So the impact on the student is very strong. And when we say, please write anything here. So um, uh, ma'am, uh, Dr. Anna has written, thank you. Why? what the person is saying write anything so what we are expected to write is anything is this is what we are expected to write anything in the response so the person who has framed this paper is expecting us to write anything while reading this question if i write thank you it may not be wrong altogether so when we are talking of communication skills, understanding how the response will be perceived by the receiver is important before framing a message. So I use this simple paper for this. Similarly, draw a rectangle with three lines. Typically, what happens is most of the people will take up a pen, use one of the border margin lines, and draw a rectangle using three lines. So using this, if uh, you can see the cursor, uh, Ma'am, can you use the cursor to show on the sheet? Yes. Yes. Take one of the borders, use three lines, and draw a line. So, yes. So, using three lines, one of the borders across on the sheet, and typically people will do. But what is expected? Draw a rectangle with three lines. So, what we are expected to do, draw a rectangle, typical rectangle, and draw three lines inside it. Draw three lines inside it. So, take a rectangle and draw three lines inside it. This is what is expected by the person who has set up the paper. While in most cases, in 
typical example only 50% of the people would understand what is expected of them to do in this kind of a simple a level exercise a level exercise this is from ireland that i have picked up it is 10th grade examination or a test for a 10th grade student a a level is so for a simple exercise there can be a difference of understanding between sender and receiver imagine when we are communicating complex information and complex uh, decisions when we are communicating down the line in an organization at that time what kind of confusion distortion or misunderstanding can take place and therefore the messages have to be very clearly defined and very clearly stated so this is the point i wanted to bring across but when you take up such exercises in class it may be very simple it need not be complex this is not complex it is very very simple but the impact on the student is very strong they look forward it what different will happen in the next session what will it be it that will ma'am will make us do that we have not done before and that excitement if we are able to bring in our classes in terms of our delivery will have a different impact altogether yes uh, can we move to the next one ma'am yeah next we come to the content there are three it is a three pronged approach we had begin with first was the persona how the faculty comes forward because that's the first thing that the student comes in contact with second is the delivery how you start delivering how you plan your sessions and third is the content what all you deliver in your um, content what you plan in your content can we go to the next slide ma'am so when i say that you plan your content in such a manner tell me and i forget so if you plan in your content in a manner where it is only delivery 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 you are only talking 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 and there is no interaction from other side there is no involvement from other side tell me and i forget so if the mode of the interaction in your classes or in your session is just one way traffic then it will remain only one way and there will be no two way it will be going in from one side and coming out from the other side if you teach me and i may remember and if you teach me wherein the student is not only hearing you listening to you is taking some notes being participative at times asking a few questions at that time the two you know, the student may remember you and typically research has uh, proven that whatever has transpired in the last 24 hours in the next 24 hours we remember only 25% of it at the end of one month 30 days we remember only 1% of what has transpired 30 days back and at the end of one year probably somebody will ask you who took your ftp session uh, in iot academy for personality development for teachers you may remember okay there was one lady there were a lot of technical problems but we don't sort of remember her name it was a great session it was a nice session lot of examples were shared and uh, but at the same time due to technical uh, errors in between we had little difficulty to catch up with things so you may remember the broad thing but you may not remember the exact information but if you involve me you learn and what you may remember from today's session you may not remember me but you definitely may remember one or two of the examples or stories or anecdotes that i have shared that you may remember and you may quote in your own classes or you may use in your own classes if you find them appropriate so involve me and i learn and that should be the focus of content development whenever we are creating content because there's so much of content available on the internet students are now being exposed to only content through various sources and through various uh, mediums so what we need to do is screen it curate it in such a manner that it is short sweet and relevant short sweet and relevant and presented in such a manner that students are involved in doing the process becoming part of the process and learning along with us and we are learning with the students and at the same time no harm in claiming to the students it's okay i don't know i am learning with you i am also evolving as i am teaching the subject over the years and this all of you will agree with me that once we teach a subject for the first time we are 
good at it. We try to be good at it. Second time we teach that same subject, we are more confident in our delivery. We have more resources and we are able to structure it more professionally. And the third time we are teaching the same subject, we are completely proficient in it and we are master of the subject. We are expert of the subject. You ask us anything, anywhere, and we are there for you and explain to you. So this is a process. Each one of us goes through it. So own it and make it your own. Be part of it, imbibe it, and be confident about it. Me again, ma'am, we can move to the next slide. Now let's take a pause for a moment. And uh, I would request you all to read this PPT uh, silently along with me. Now think back to when you learned a valuable lesson or skill. Try, give it a few minutes, two minutes, give it a few minutes. Take a pause. Think, when was it when you learned a valuable lesson or skill? Not necessarily in the classroom fashion, anywhere. Maybe it was while interacting with your own child, while interacting with your colleague, with interacting your senior, watching a video, watching a YouTube channel, watching watching the a TV. When was it that you last learned a valuable lesson or skill? Chances are you didn't learn it after reading about it for the first time or hearing it from a friend. It took different stories, analogies, and explanations for the lesson to sink in. And don't forget how much time it took for the lesson to sink in. It took some time. Can anybody, anyone would like to share the last valuable lesson they learned? Uh, Vidya, ma'am, can help us unmute you. Anyone would like to share? Yes, please come forward, Dr. Anna. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Hello, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, in fact, in fact, when you were sharing so many uh, things, and I could recall a couple of things, and just recently, since you asked us this question, yes. you know, as you were saying that, you know, yes, immediately we will not try to recall when did you learn. Of course, not through reading, Maybe I was, you know, I, I used to do these PPTs for presentations, etc. Mm. And I wanted to learn how to play the video, add this video, mm. you know, in my PPT. Mm. So it plays immediately rather than, uh, you know, putting a link to it mm. and then going to the YouTube. Because mm. I used to always be skeptical. Mm. If I have to go out and present it, yes. will that video work? Yes. You know, I was always a little skeptical about it. Yes. So I wanted to download the video and mm. do it. And so... I went to Google and I asked, how do I go about downloading, etc. But I learn a, a lot of things from my uh, students. Mm. I'm a principal of a college of education. Ma Good, to you. College. Good to know you. Good to know you. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, so I learned a lot from my students. So I asked mm. a couple of my students and they told me. And after that, I started doing it. But then way around, you know, I started forgetting. I said, okay, what did they tell me? What was it? like? You know? <laughs> so then when I was doing once at home, and my nephew was there. So I said, okay, see, I'm doing this. Where am I? What am I not, not doing? doing right. I forget? Uh, uh, so then he was like, Masi, you have to, you know, remember, you have to download that particular site where you can freely download your video. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, you copy that link, that URL, and then you go about it. I said, ah, yeah, I can remember. Mm -hmm. And I did it. So then in the, the following day, when he, you know, he called me up and said, did you succeed? So I said, yes, yes, I succeeded. And not only that, I could even prop that uh, no, video um, where I, I didn't want the unwanted things from the video and I had to crop the video. Yes. As I do remember, you had told me once mm -hmm. and that is the way I uh, did it. So mm -hmm. it was not through, you know, reading up. And if yes. somebody told me and then when somebody said, you know, the way it was put across, I could recall that. And I, uh, you know, successfully uh, did it and I remember it also. So that way, as you rightly said, you know, when we learn, that is why this peer learning and peer tutoring helps in yes, learning. Exactly. Know, Reading up and this teacher, uh, you know, talk and then teacher interacting with them doesn't have so much, as much as peers, as much as our students. So I learn a lot of these things from my students. Yeah. Thanks, ma'am. Thank, Thank you for uh, asking me to share. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, you have hit the nail uh, uh, rightly, as I said, uh, that we have to give the opportunity for the peer learning. 
the moment you give exercises in class you give worksheets in class uh, during that uh, you know break up that i had suggested 20 minutes you teach and 10 minutes you give the time for the involvement and interaction it is not with you it is amongst themselves and that is where the peer learning learning will come so if one of the student is not being able to understand many of the topics and issues they will resolve within themselves because maybe some of the examples that you have given it has hit most of the students but some of the other students were not able to appreciate so others will be able to explain no it is like this it is you have to understand and uh, what a fantastic example you have shared to bring across this point thank you so much thank you so uh, we must um, understand that change is hard it is hard for us even it is hard for our learners so we have to give them space we have to give them time and we have to create different methodologies resources opportunities and uh, environment in such a manner that each student with their abilities with their learning patterns and learning style is able to grasp what we are explaining so instead of racing through the content sometimes we are forced to do that because there are challenges we are part of the university and there is a part of a number of classes that are allotted to us try and explain the most important concept in different ways even if you are not able to do it for your entire syllabus as i have explained earlier in the delivery and in the content formation if you are not able to do it for the entire course structure at least do it for the important topics so that they remain with the students and so that they remember you as a faculty who took the pain of being different and a class apart from others next slide please ma'am so uh, i am coming to my uh, concluding slide and uh, for inspiring teachers we can say this particular slide sums up all the uh, points that i have discussed uh, teacher need to be enthusiastic need to be innovative in teaching bringing across using different tools methodologies to make it more interactive to make it exciting uh, thought provoking stimulating for the students reflective and collaborative within the class create that as atmosphere and environment where the students are able to reflect and collaborate with each other have a positive classroom management we are able to control the class wherever there is a disturbance we are able to control it nip it in the bud and uh, probably uh, um, next time if i get the opportunity of interacting then we could use uh, a session on how body language can be used for con uh, class control that could be one of the topics that we can discuss share our own experiences of different sessions that we have conducted safe and stimulating classroom atmosphere purposeful and relevant teaching flexibility in understanding the various learning styles and patterns of the students and positive relationship with the students and positive always giving them that assurance that this is a safe environment wherever you will ask any type of question it will be not ridiculed it will not be uh, you know a question that how you can ask or it is a stupid question or it is not a good question at all or it is not a relevant question every question will deserve an answer an appropriate answer and a response from your faculty yes dr rana you would like to say something okay so i think uh, no ma'am okay no, so raising hand was by mistake okay no. doctor uh, i think uh, mr ashok kumar jha has also raised his hand probably it is by mistake if it is not please do write in the chat all right uh, can we move to the next slide ma'am now on this note i will leave you all for today and uh, if you feel like it uh, i would have liked it better if more interaction would have come from the participant but i guess uh, this is uh, the result of having a session right after lunch uh, next time i will request iot please give me a session which is not right after lunch give me a session which is later in the day so that everybody is alert and active and not feeling a little sleepy anyways <laughs> so this is probably the uh, um, problem that each one of us is faculty member face that after lunch if you have a session it is a challenge to keep everybody together with you anyways give it a pause in a moment to think and read this and if you feel comfortable please share your response here on the chat if you had to choose between a teacher who instilled in you a few impactful lifelong lessons 
or the teacher who explained everything but nothing at the same time who would you choose would you choose the first teacher if you had the opportunity or would you choose the second teacher if you were given the opportunity to teach to choose a faculty who's going to come and teach you of the two faculty members which one would you choose and in your answer lies your choice of becoming that kind of person whatever is going to be your choice is going to tell you that this is the kind of faculty you should plan to be or if you are already are then my congratulations to you my uh, best wishes to you and i am so happy to know that each one of you has come equipped with great assets and teaching skills and we as a country we as a group are happy to have you Thank you so much for patiently listening to me and bearing with all the technical errors and problems that we faced today. Uh, you are a great lot. Uh, it has been a challenge for the organizing team, for me, for you as well. But we have all stuck it out together. So thank you so much once again, IOT, for inviting me for this session. And I hope uh, there was something that I could bring to the table and deliver, which would have made a difference to your understanding of personality for faculty and for the teachers in higher education. This is just a sweetener. Uh, at the end, once the PPT is shared, you can just go through it. And of course, IoT will share my contact details. Something you would like to discuss on a personal level, most welcome to do so.